Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Carrie, and today I'm doing my August wrap up. I'm, I'm slowly getting there, I promise. We're gonna be done soon. Uh, okay, so in the month of August, I read a total of nine books. I started coming out of my reading slump finally, and uh, the quality of books were a little mixed, but it was a decent month. In the month of August, I did read a total of nine books, and of those nine books, I read one one-star book, one two-star book, two three-star books, four four-star books, and one five-star book. So it was a little across the board, but let's go ahead and get to it. And as always, I'm just gonna do this in the order of which I read them, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I read in August is going to be Complicated Hearts books one and two. This is a duet and it follows a thruple, threesome, whatever you want to call it. It is Breslin, Asher, and Landon. And uh, so the first book is more of a setup. Uh, it's it's very small. It's like 200, 250 pages or so. And it's more of a setup of what is to come than really anything else. There's not very many sexy times in it. Um, it the heroine, so it is MMF uh, and there is like Mel and Mel action in this book. Uh, so if that's not your thing, don't read this one. Uh, but I enjoyed the first book qu quite a bit. I will say Breslin annoyed me in this first book. So it follows along with uh, two different timelines. So you've got Breslin and Asher who are high school sweethearts. And now you're following in current time, which is going to be Breslin and Landon and they are in college and they're dating. Asher kind of broke Breslin's heart and um, somehow he comes back into her life. And that's kind of where the story kind of picks up and takes off sort of somewhat. Uh, I enjoyed the first book. I gave it four stars and then I immediately started the second book. I will say where as I thought Breslin was annoying in the first book, I found her insufferable in the second. I gave the second book two stars. I really didn't like it. I didn't like her character at all. Honestly, if they had the two boys, if they would have ditched her and just like went together, it would have been a five star book for me. I did not like this heroine. She completely ruined the whole book for me. Like, I enjoyed the conflict. I enjoyed the the drama that kind of happened in the series. But this heroine just was obnoxious. And so, yeah, she totally ruined the book for me. The next book that I read is Give In. This is by Layla Frost. And I gave this book three stars. It follows Damien and Eden. And this is a taboo student teacher romance, uh, but it also has some other tropes like stalking and uh, a stripper heroine in it. I thought it was just okay. Uh, the storyline was okay. The plot was okay. Everything was just okay. I mean, it was a bit boring. I didn't really love the stalking elements to this book like there's so many things that I thought was like way up my alley that I was going to love you know student teachers my thing you know taboo is my thing oh, age gap so you know that's my thing too but um there was just something about it I I don't know if it was I mean the writing was easy to get through and it was quick but uh it was a little long and honestly I just didn't quite connect with the characters. I don't really know what else to say. It was just okay. The next book I read is Next in Line. This is by Amy Dawes. It is her second in the series with Wait With Me, Wait For Me, something like that. It's about the mechanic. That's a really, really popular book. So Next in Line follows Sam and Maggie. And this is a brother's best friend trope. And, uh... I enjoyed it. I did. I gave it four stars, so I did enjoy it. This was another case where the heroine kind of really annoyed me. 
Uh, so she was obsessed with her ex-boyfriend. She was doing all of these things to try to get him back. And that was like the big plot line was that she was like going on all these adventures trying to get this guy back whenever there was this perfectly amazing guy who was there the whole time. And she just overlooked him for this ex-boyfriend. And they never really... The thing is, is that Amy never really explained why this boyfriend was so great that she would overlook this amazing guy that she was with. And I get like that was the whole, like that was the plot line of it. But for me, like I want to know what was so, I mean, I get that he was like a quarterback or some, you know, football player, but surely that's not the reason that she overlooked. I don't know. There, like, there was nothing special about this ex-boyfriend. And to me, I wish there was. I wish there was something in there that made it understand, made me relate to the character as to why she couldn't get over her ex. Uh, but there was just nothing. And so it kind of made me really frustrated with the heroine. Uh, so I will say that if you like a kind of rugged, plaid-wearing, uh, blue-collar, redhead boy you're going to love this book because I just, I fell in love with Sam. He is a cinnamon roll hero and he is just, mm, he's beautiful. And so I really enjoyed it overall. Like I said, I gave it four stars, but the heroine did kind of annoy me. So just kind of think about that going in. Immediately after finishing Next in Line, I went ahead and started One Moment, Please, which is Amy Dawes, uh, the book number three in the series. And I enjoyed this one as well. I gave it four stars. This is about Josh and Lindsay. And Lindsay is the girl in the first books, her best friend. Uh, so she is hanging out at the hospital for inspiration, just similar to how the first girl forgot her name, uh, how she hung out at the mechanic shop for inspiration. And the one of the doctors kind of sees her. He is, it's hate to love. I will say that it is absolutely hate to love. And this also has a surprise pregnancy trope uh, that's kind of known from almost the get go. So that's like the whole point of this plot is surprise pregnancy. He's the one who actually breaks it to her that she's pregnant. Uh, and so that was a bit of a twist from normal surprise pregnancy trips because obviously he knows immediately since he's the one who tells her. Uh, I enjoyed it. I love a surprise pregnancy trip. Like that is something that I really enjoy. I know most people don't. Uh, so just know that going in. But overall, I enjoyed it. This one, I actually, um, I enjoyed both characters. I enjoyed the whole plot of it. Gave it four stars. Highly enjoyable book. The next book I read is Ache. This is by Marley Valentine. This is the first time that I've read this author. This is a gay for you, best friends to lovers story. I will say it also has an amnesia trope in it that I didn't, didn't love. Uh, it is a very short book. Uh, I think it's like 200 pages or less. I flew through this one in a day. If you like that kind of storyline, if the gay for you thing like works for you, I suggest reading it. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. I will say it didn't have as many sexy times in it as I was hoping for. Uh, it had very little actually, but the plot was really good. Uh, other than that amnesia trope in the middle. Didn't love that, but what can you say? I still enjoyed it and I think I will read another book by this author in the future. The next book that I read is The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. And Gabby did me wrong on this one. I read this book because Gabby like hyped it up so much. She explained it like it was going to be like a haunted house story. And I was like, okay, I'm so here for this. I immediately started reading it. Girl, this is not a haunted house story. No, 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 no. See, this is dark matter. This is sci-fi. This is, what the fuck did I read? This is, I don't know why I read over 500 pages. This book was so freaking boring. I gave it one stars. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. Uh, that being said, I hated Dark Matter. Sci-fi stories are not my thing. Uh, I think they are too obvious. The whole like... 
multiple timeline dimension things like it's been so done that like you immediately know that you're supposed to like picture where you want to go and it's supposed to pop up you know so like whenever they do stuff like that it just makes me mad uh and also this book was like screwed up in the most weird ways uh it did have a couple of creepy scenes just a couple not much uh and overall like i can't even really i don't even know how to explain this okay so let me just kind of tell you a little bit about it it is about a family who is moving um i i guess this guy is getting a job somewhere else back in his hometown no his father it's been so long that I literally don't even remember what I read. Okay, so this guy, uh, his father's dying and um, his father was like a real asshole to him. And so he's got this family. He's an amazing dad, amazing husband, has this perfect life. He's a cop and, you know, he's like in this big town. Well, his father's dying and in the will, he is supposed to get the house, but he has to do something, including moving back. So he ends up, uh, they end up choosing his wife, basically talks him into moving back home which he absolutely doesn't want to do and he moves back home to this town and all these creepy things start happening um it does have a tiny bit of a haunted house vibe but no not really uh and i don't even really know how to explain it it's more like haunted ghost meets sci-fi if that even makes sense I, this book was all over the place. It was literally all over the place. It ran around in circles. Like you literally ran around in freaking circles for like five to 600 pages. <sighs> Enough ranting. I hated it. I hated it. I do not suggest it. Uh, especially for romance readers like the, ugh, no. Haunted house my ass. The next book that I read is A Local Woman Missing. This is by far one of my favorite books of the year. I adore this book so much. And this is a case of Gabby did me right because uh, she recommended this one as well. And I read it because she recommended it and I freaking love it. Uh, okay, so this follows multiple different point of views. It's about a mother and a child who go missing. And the wife ends up dead uh, with a suicide note saying, you'll never find her. And the daughter's been missing for like 10 years and all of a sudden she's found. And um, it is a case of who done it, but it's a case of twist and turns like you'll never believe, you'll never guess it. Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, probably one of my favorite books of the year. I highly, highly recommend it. And sneak peek, I've been doing sprayed edges. So, you know that's fun. Anyway, I really enjoyed this book and I cannot wait to continue reading more by Mary Kubica. And the next and the last book that I read is Just Friends. This is by Charity Farrell. This is a case where TikTok made me do it. The author put out this absolutely fabulous TikTok and I was hooked. I was like, yes, this is it. Let me read this immediately. So I jumped on and I read it and unfortunately, the TikTok ended up being nothing like what the book was about. I mean, it kind of was, but definitely not. Uh, so in the TikTok, it had like two people texting each other and what the girl was like wanting to lose her virginity. And so she messages her best friend and was like, hey, do you want it? And he's like, ha ha ha, like thinking she's joking. And she's like, no, seriously, like I'm, I'm giving it up, period. I want you to be the one to do it. And you know, turns into a love story. Uh, yeah, that not exactly what happened in the book. Uh, but I enjoyed it kind of, sort of, I gave it three stars. I, you yeah. know, uh, okay. So it did somewhat start out like that, but no, not really. And then I don't really know how to explain this book other than to say that there was a, a twist at the end that made no sense. And apparently this author has done before in the same series. And that kind of is a no-no, like to do the same exact twist in the same exact series. Um, 
I didn't love the twist. I didn't love the twist. I didn't like the storyline, uh, the abusive, there, there's an abusive situation with a boyfriend in this series. It is following two best friends. They've been best friends for years. Uh, basically they're in love with each other, but they're neither one of them are willing to admit it, especially the guy because he doesn't want to lose his best friend. So he's a playboy. She is kind of hurt by it at first, but then she just kind of is like, well, whatever it is, what it is. So she starts dating other people. It gets complicated from there. Uh, like I said, there's some couple of things that I found uh, problematic in it and didn't really love. Uh, but I enjoyed it overall, so I gave it three stars. Not the end of the world. All right, that's it. That's all of the books that I read in the month of August. Let me know if you read any of these below. Also, let me know if there's anything that I need to read because I'm always on the lookout for like a super fantastic book, especially if it's age gap and or taboo and or like crazy, like the wild kind of stuff. If you find anything like that, let me know. I don't really love like bully like high school stuff anymore or new adult stuff so much but like if you find any kind of like age gap daddy kind of stuff hit me up let me know and other than that um please if you're still with me leave the dog emoji down below let me know you're here thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoy this video and i'll catch you on the next one mm -hmm.